Good day from the Nautic Logic crew. Today we are going to upgrade a Model 725 Air Guide Speedometer with an AGR or Air Glide GPS upgrade. This is the unit or the cartridge that we're going to insert. The unit has been fully disassembled so that all the pressure mechanical innards have been evacuated and removed and the bezel and base plate have been polished and refinished so this is where we're going to begin. To get the job done you're going to need some miscellaneous hand tools small screwdrivers, snippers, needle nose pliers, hex keys and then of course you're going to need some drill bits. Begin by making the modifications to the frame. First you're going to need to make sure that the spindle brackets are bent back flush with the backbone of the frame and then there are two holes that are intermediate to the frame here and here and they need to be drilled out to an eighth of an This is the base plate. Uh, hold it with the mounting point at noon. You'll need to modify the base plate in a couple of places. One is we need to drill a quarter inch hole about a half inch at nine o'clock. Uh, it's not critical exactly where it's at but in that general area. And also this hole where the diaphragm nipple poked through needs to be enlarged to about five eighths of an inch. Insert the provided grommet in this location. Here at Nautic Logic, we like to have your cartridge pre-programmed to your specific application. By that, there are different maximum dial speeds for 50, 80, and then there's a universal mode that deals with everything else. Um, the cartridge is pre-programmed, but if it becomes necessary for you to do it, there's a way and a means for you to, to change the configuration or reset it to defaults. And to do that, you're going to probably need a 12 volt power source. And I'm just going to hook this up very quickly. Black is our common. The blue wire is the backlighting, and it's very uh, handy to have for visual feedback. As the cartridge goes through its routine, it gives you some clues on what it's doing. I'm going to hook both of these, the backlighting and the power, which is the brown, to 12 volts. When I apply power, you'll see that the cartridge will come to live. The backlights are flashing to indicate that it's waiting for a GPS sync. Let's power off. To configure an AGR cartridge, use this one page handout which describes the pins for the jumper settings. There are five pairs to describe the dial, two describe the mode, and one to set the defaults. For our 50 mile an hour dial that we're using today, we want to make sure that there is no jumpers in the first two pairs here that describe 50 miles per hour. Then we're going to insert a jumper into the defaults and power up so that that description is being programmed into the device. For today's 50 mile an hour application, we're going to make sure there's no jumpers inserted for the dial. And to set those defaults, we're going to place a jumper on the default pins. Apply power. A visual cue of rapid flashing for about four seconds indicates that it's programming the defaults. Once the normal flash returns for no satellite sync, then you know that everything's programmed. With the dial and the frame prepped, we're going to insert the cartridge to inside this slot where the shelves are where you drill the eighth inch holes. From the end where the bend spindles uh, have been bent up, insert the cartridge with it orientated as so, the rotors up, Make sure that it clears the back side of the dial. And as we insert it, if it seems to struggle, check for protrusions on the back side. If these 
are not clipped already, take a pair of needle nose pliers and just clip them off gently. Just like that. Proceeding, we'll slide the cartridge in. And we'll look to see that the holes for the cartridge and the frame line up. Drop the number 440 cap screw into the hole from the back side. Using a 3 30 seconds Allen key, we're going to hold it. And we have a lock nut, 440 lock nut. Just reach around from the back side. Make sure this, the rotor is centered in the hole and tighten up the nuts. During the process of disassembly, the quarter inch standoffs may or may not come off, but at this point we need to put them back on. There should be four and most often there is star washers to help lock them in place. quarter-inch nut driver will go secure them. With all four standoffs in place, remove the front nut of the PS2 connector, back the back nut out until it still has some threads to grab, place it in the 5 8 hole with the cable aligned, aligned to 9 o'clock. Start the front nut. And we're going to use a 17 millimeter wrench to secure with my pliers and my 17 millimeter wrench gently snug the nuts with the PS2 connector firmly in place feed the wires through the grommet one at a time is the easiest way to do it. Just get them started like so. Now we're going to attach the standoffs to the back plate. Pull the wires down so that it draws the internal assembly towards the back plate. Gent gently coax the PS2 cable so that it's not pinched or binding. And we're going to reuse the mounting screws for the standoffs that were pulled out on disassembly.
Return the original screws into the standoffs to, to secure the dial and internal frame to the base plate. Just get the screws started at first to get them all started. Then secure all four. During the course of disassembly, there is two cork pads on either corner between the frame and the dial. These may or may not come off while you are disassembling, but if they did, we're going to take a little bit of silicon, apply it to the cork pad, and slide them back in there. Here's the cork pad. I'm going to apply just a little bit of silicon with a toothpick. To it only to one side and that side the sticky side goes against the dial we're now preparing to attach the needle to the rotor the first thing you want to do is elevate the base plate with a couple of blocks so that the there was clearance for the wires to fall easily out the back without uh, disrupting the level of the unit. You'll need some Gorilla Glue. We found this super glue gel to be about the best to use and you can acquire it at your local Walmart. With a small dab of glue Place it on the rotor. Insert the needle pointing to 15 miles an hour, drop it down, and rotate until the needle falls squarely at 5 miles an hour. This is our assembly thus far. We have the cartridge in, secured by the 440 nuts and screws. The cable is routed for the PS2 connector, which is secured on the back, and the wires protruding through our grommet on our base. Taking our nice clean lens, we'll return it to the unit, gently slide it over the old adjustment screw. Place the rubber cushions for the bezel. at about 4 and 7 o'clock and find the top of the bezel and align it with the dial and I am using brass screws in place of the old rusty originals. At 12 and 6 o'clock. Now we're ready to calibrate the unit. We'll turn it over, take a look at the PS2 connector on the back side, and we're going to insert the calibration jumpers. This first brown jumper tells the unit that we need to calibrate you can refer to 
instructions on the exact places to put that in. And the second one that we're going to insert is our touch wires, which lets the unit know when we observe the needle in the right position. I've reconnected the 12 volts and now we're ready to begin the calibration process. As I apply power, you will see the needle skip up to about 7 miles per hour and begin to creep to the first large hash mark, which is 10 miles per hour. When the needle falls squarely on the hash mark, we're going to briefly touch the touch wires. At this point, the needle will skip up to about 14 miles an hour and begin to creep to the next major hash mark, which is 15 miles per hour. When the needle falls squarely on the hash mark, I'm going to briefly touch the touch wires. Again, we'll proceed to the next hash mark. And again, when the needle is squarely over the hash mark, we'll touch the touch wires. This process continues at every 5 miles per hour, all the way up to full scale, minus 5 miles per hour. On this 50 mile an hour dial, that'll be 45 miles an hour. If you're doing a 60 mile an hour dial, which uses this universal calibration, you won't see the skipping process. The needle will only creep, but you again touch the touch wires at every 5 miles per hour. Once we touch the last position, the needle will retrace. It will fall all the way back to zero and then retrace each calibration point as seen by the touch wires. This is a visual confirmation of your calibration. If you're unhappy with the calibration, then simply turn the power off and begin the process again. If you're using a universal calibration, when you get to the last hash mark, in this case 45, touch and hold the calibration wires until you see the needle retrace. This retracing will go on indefinitely until you turn the power off. Now that you're done, pull the jumper wires out and you're good to go.